my name is uh, Timo Stallenberg. I'm a Plone Core developer and founder of Kit Concept, the Plone solution provider from uh, Germany, Bonn. Uh, I'm a member of a few uh, Plone teams, uh, the framework team, the release team, and the testing and continuous integration team. Um, and I think Eric laid out the, like, the general idea of like the Plone REST API, right? Plone server and Plone client, the, the talk you will hear uh, afterwards. And I will try to focus on like the, the connection between all of those, uh, those components and uh, try to give you an idea what, what Plone REST API looks like. Um, Plone REST API is a RESTful hypermedia API for Plone. I won't go too much into detail because I gave a talk about that last year at the conference and we don't have much time. Um, <laughs> So I will leave it at that. So for me, everything like started around like three years ago. My team was building uh, an app on top of Plone, uh, and we, we ran into a few problems, like general scalability problems, but our main problem was actually that our, that our page loads were too slow. So we had an application where the user could like browse through a lot of content, search content, and it was just not, not quick enough, right? Um, also, another problem was that the, the, the project was growing, so, um, and it, and it was supposed to have like a rich user interface and like the amount of jQuery code and JavaScript code that we had was just like killing us, right? Uh, so we couldn't really handle the complexity any longer. Um, and we also needed like some good like UI building blocks that we could reuse, like right, something like jQuery UI or whatever you used like back then maybe. So um, I was the project lead back then and, and I was starting to look around for like different um, solutions that we had. And I looked into um, what I would call like the modern web or what we have now what we now call like the modern web. Back then I, we, we choose um, to go with, with Angular. React was also there already, um, but it was um, a bit like the new kid on the block, so we went with Angular because it, it seemed back then a bit more mature. Um, in the end it was quite like a good decision because we were able to like really fix all the problems that I described um, with that. Our, our team was, was able to pick up that rather quickly. Um, and um, we built it a fast scalable uh, application with real time functionality. Um, we had all the building blocks. So if you choose Angular or React, you usually have like also the UI building blocks. So you can just choose from that. You don't have to build start from the scratch, right? So it's and, and it's a framework. So you have all all kinds of nice things that you can reuse that make your life easier. Uh, since then, like a lot of things uh, happened in the JavaScript community. Um, and uh, we we seen like uh, Angular has a new uh, um, Angular had a new successor which is called Angular two right uh, React matured um, we saw uh, frameworks like Re uh, React Native for instance or Native Script that allow you to to use JavaScript to create native applications uh, Electron that allows you to create like desktop applications with all that kind of functionality so there's a lot lot of things. Uh, going on. So that, that really might sound too good to be true to you. So, and, and now I will like talk about, about the downside. It, it's all like JavaScript, right? I, I mean, I have to admit that I really like, like Python, right? I mean, I like the design decisions. I, I like coding in Python, right? It's really great. And, and to be honest, JavaScript is also like, I, I always miss the elegancy in, in like Python when I, when I do JavaScript. But, but bottom line is that, that um, JavaScript is a reality and all the, um, all the innovation right now happens like in the JavaScript world, right? It has like the, the main advantage that it runs on all the browsers, right? Um, so uh, that's, that's the thing. So if you want like the candy, you need to like deal with JavaScript. You can like it or you, you, you don't. But my, my honest opinion is that if, if you're a web developer in 2016 and you, and you don't like know any of those advanced like JavaScript frameworks that, that will that will become even more complicated the longer, uh, the longer, um, the more time it like will take, right? Um, so we have a problem here. We have like a, a JavaScript community that goes at a real like fast pace, right? I mean, I just I just was offline two days on Twitter, and then it turned out that there was a new um, JavaScript um, package manager, right? That I totally missed. Um, and those things happen, right? But they happen for a reason because like there's. It's always like an improvement, right? And but for for us, for the Plone community, that's that's a huge problem because um, we have um, we have usually like large deployments, and Plone uh, works usually in in a um, uh, for organizations that are like rather big and that plan 
long in advance, like, right? Like, for instance, universities. I mean, I know universities that are, that are still on Plone 3, and they, they plan to go on Plone 4 or 5, like, in the next, like, five years or whatever, right? So that's, that's the pace they go. And it's really important. Stability is really important for them, right? Security is really important. Like, uh, they have content-centric uh, um, applications, so all the stuff that Plone is really good at, right? Um, and on the other hand, we have all this nice, um, um, really fast going uh, JavaScript uh, world, and we have to get the two together, right? We want to have the best of like both worlds, ideally. Um, so how, how do we do that? How do we scope with that problem? Um, Eric already um, used the term like headless CMS. The basic idea is really that you have a, like decoupled, uh, that you decouple your front end from your back end, right? Um, more and more functionality goes into like the browser. Um, less goes on the uh, on the server. What what Ramon basically explained to you, right? So we have like we can reduce stuff on the server. We, we could get rid of all like the browser views and all that kind of stuff and do that on the front end. Um, but if we do that, um, we need uh, uh, a kind of, some kind of API, right? So that the front end can talk to the back end. Um, a lot of other, I, I mean, in the market, like all other CMSs or basically all um, uh, web-based like frameworks or whatever. Have have this problem right now, right? They they developed like over a long time, over a long period, and now this there's this like JavaScript stuff, and they want to adapt that, right? So other other content management systems face the same problem, and they're also like working on that. WordPress, for instance, has a, a React based uh, client, right? That is production ready, as far as I can tell. Um, Drupal also announced at the Angular conference that they're going to build an Angular 2 um, front end on top of uh, Drupal, and we will have uh, uh, another talk at the Plone conference about, um, yeah, about this headless CMS. So that's the basic idea. Uh, and the implementation of this headless CMS or this requirement is, um, as Ramon and also Eric um, told you already, is, is Plone REST API, right? That's our bridge between, between Plone and the modern web. It will allow you, or it already allows you, uh, to use any modern JavaScript framework that, that you might want to use, right? We are not opinionated in that. I, I know a lot of people are talking about, about like those JavaScript framework fights, right? That we have like people that say, hey, I want React, the other ones say Angular 2, whatever. Uh, I, I must admit, I, I did not experience that really in the community. Most people are really open, and uh, mo most people that do JavaScript these days use like different frameworks for different use cases, right? Um, so we did not want to be like opinionated in any uh, in any way, and you can use Plo and REST API with any framework that you that you want, and that's an important um, asset, right? Because it could be that like maybe next month there's uh, React 2 or whatever, right? And and we we might want to switch. Um, so Plone S REST API really like decouples this front end from the back end and allows you allows us to to use those modern um, JavaScript solutions uh, today. Um, uh, in addition to that, that you can use it today, we have this long term vision that that Ramon already presented to you, right, with with Plone Server. Um, so that's our long term long term plan. So I will go a bit through the through the API. Um, I promise I will not show you like any JSON, what, anything, right? Uh, <laughs> so I will try to be not boring, even though I, I had to pick the most boring talk, I guess. I, I mean, from, from the topic, I mean, talking about APIs. Um, so how do you how do you work with with Plone REST API, right? HTTP and REST. Um, which is basically like the implementation of the ideas of, of HTTP um, has already assets to do that. It's called like content negotiation, right? That's happened. That's that's what happens if you if you if you access a page with your browser, right? The browser sends an accept header to the uh, to the uh, to the server and says, "Hey, I I would like to have text HTML," and then the, the server replies and says, "Here's your HTML," right? So that works with other um, uh, with other formats as well. Um, since Plone REST API is, is right now JSON-based, because this is what all the JavaScript frameworks use these days, uh, but it could work with XML as well, right? So um, this is how, how we do it. The client asks, uh, hey, I, I give, me, give me a page, give me a URL, a resource, uh, and I will accept like application JSON, right? That's, that's the HTTP header that the client sends, your JavaScript framework, Angular, React, whatever you like. And the server replies um, with, a content, uh, with content in the body and a content type header that says application. JSON, so you will get JSON back, right? Um, excuse me if I, if I don't show you that JSON, but it will will be there, right? Um, so that works for for content in general. Then you might want to authenticate um, to to Plone, right? Because it could be that you write a a, a front end server, a, a client 
that that needs you to aut authenticate, right? Um, so um, basic authentication and, and pass and everything, that still works in Plone, right? So you can use just basic authentication like you're used to, but you can also use a double, a double, a JWT, JSON um, web tokens, um, which is a more modern um, way of authenticating. So the basic idea is you do a post request on this login URL, and in the body you, you provide username and password, and then um, basic authentication with basic authentication, you have to do that over and over again. And with uh, JWT, it will provide you with a token that you can keep, right? So it's a bit bit nicer than that. Um, then uh, the Plone is, is a content-centric um, application, right? So you might want to access content through the through the uh, through the Plone uh, REST API. That's that's our core um, uh, the, the core idea, right? So. Um, what we implemented is like uh, the idea is uh, to have a browsable API or a hypermedia API, right? I won't go too much into detail because I did that like last year already. But the idea is basically that you have, oh, I have JSON here, sorry. Um, so you have uh, a JSON document, say you access, you do a GET request on, on a Plone site, right? You see that uh, localhost 8080 Plone, uh, and you get a list of like all items that are inside that Plone portal, right? This, Right now, there's only one, but you get an ID back, which is basically the, the URL of that page. So you have the front page, you have a document type, and a description, and a title. And if you follow, if you, if you would click on the add ID link, you could follow that and browse the URL, right? I mean, that's, that's basically the idea of hypermedia, that you have connected uh, uh, resources or documents that you can browse. This, of course, only works for, for get, right? Just browsing. You can't interact, really, with the, with the um, um, with the system. So here's a quick demo of the browsing. Um, here we, ha we have a Plone site, uh, a Plone 5 site with, with two pages and the default content, right? Um, and I built a really that simple um, Angular application on top of that. Um, so here you see you have two, two pages. This is the Angular app. It's really like minimal. Um, you see that you have just a navigation and you, you see that, but, but you can see that the page loads a lot faster than, um, than in the Plone app, right? I mean, it's of course unfair because it's a really minimal application, but the only thing that you transfer is um, the JSON, right? So it's a lot faster to load and you don't load the entire page, but only like the content, right? And here you see I changed the, uh, the, the page one, right? And then it reflects on the, on the Angular app. So that's just a, like an app to, to browse. Um, I, will, I will provide that example um, so you can use it as a starting point, but it's really far from anything that the Plone, Plone uh, client does, right? What, what Eric will show you later. Um, then you want to do more than, than just, uh, just browsing, right? You want to interact with, with, the, with the content. And the term uh, that is used in that uh, is, is CRUD. Um, CRUD means that you have uh, four operations on your content that you might want to do. That's create, uh, read, update, and delete. And that maps to the um, to HTTP verbs, and the HTTP verbs are post, uh, get, put, and delete. So if you want to um, create a, a new document, you do a post request on a folder with the information about like the title and stuff like that. If you want to access that object that you just created, you do a get request on that URL. If you want to update it, you do a put request or a patch request. And if you want to delete it, you do an HTTP delete request. So that's basically the CRUD operation. Um, if you want to create, um, uh, you usually don't, I mean, that, though, this is like the HTTP le level, right? If you create a user application, you can, you don't want to interact uh, with on, on that level, right? You want to provide a form for users that, that they can use and you want to auto-generate um, this form. For that, you need some kind of schema in your front end uh, so that the front end knows how to, how to show you, say, a date field or something, right? And for that, we are using a JSON schema and Prone REST API provides a types endpoint that gives you a schema for, uh, for any content um, type in Plone. And you can use that um, uh, um, JSON schema information to render uh, a form. And um, Eric Berhold um, created a Angular 2 schema form um, application for, um, for Angular 2, uh, but there's also one for React that, that allows you to create um, forms out of this JSON schema, right? Um, so the idea is basically that you have this endpoint and you just ask that endpoint for the, uh, for the, for the schema, but you can also embed that schema in, in, a, in, in, like a, in, a, in a get request, for instance, if you want to render a, uh, a form. Um, so I think I'm, I might 
want to, I mean, yeah, I will, I will show it really quickly. So here's uh, uh, an unseen example of this Angular 2 schema form. So you see that all the widgets are there. Um, you have a, a date widget, you have uh, um, a master like slave widgets and all, all the bells and whistles that you would uh, would expect. Um, same is true for like the React uh, schema form, for instance, right? So that's that's the cool thing actually about like those JavaScript frameworks. Uh, a lot of people build stuff for you that you can just reuse, right? Um, and that's also also used in Plone Server, uh, which which Eric will show you um, um, shortly. Um, another um, another uh, thing that that Plone REST API. Uh, what Plone and REST API provides you is, is what we call components. Components are basically just um, objects or snippets on your page, right? Think, think of like, for instance, a navigation or the breadcrumbs or other parts, right? That you need to to um, um, to render a page. Um, so so far, we have a navigation endpoint that just gives you the navigation uh, that allows you to to show like the portal navigation and the uh, or what what we have right now is navigation portlet and the uh, uh, the navigation bar, breadcrumbs, um, there, those are basically just like really trivial endpoints that you just query and then you can uh, can get that information. Um, we have ways to to deal with workflow. Um, so you can, for instance, uh, you can, of course, the, the, the workflow information is embedded if you do a get request on, con on a content object, but you can also change um, the, the workflow status of, a, uh, of an object by posting to the, uh, to the URL like say you want to publish the front page, then you then you use that that URL to publish that. Um, we have ways to query the the registry. So we have a, a registry endpoint for Plona registry. So you can uh, uh, do a GET request to to get a setting and to to update a setting. Um, then we have a users endpoint that allows you basically the CRUD operations for users. So you can create a user, you can uh, retrieve a user, you can update a user, and you can delete a user. Um, that's that's working. We're using that in production actually. Um, some things are, are missing at the users endpoint. Uh, things like missing password reset and all that kind of stuff. That's that's additional um, functionality that we haven't implemented yet, but the basics are are there. Um, we also uh, expose a search endpoint. Search is like kind of a really complicated topic um, because we, we not only have like the, we don't only have to expose like the Z catalog functional, uh, functionality, but we also want to use, be able to use Solar and um, Elasticsearch and Solar has like two different JSON APIs and Elasticsearch as well, right? And they have really different ideas of how how to do things, right? I, in, also internally, uh, even though they b both use Lucene. So uh, if we want to create a unified uh, search API, um, I think that's, personally, I think that's that's just impossible, right? Because like Solar and Elasticsearch didn't get their APIs right in the first place and uh, to unify them would be just impossible, right? So we, we need to find a way um, to deal with that. Um, but we, um, but Lucas Graf created a uh, like basic um, uh, search uh, UI that that basically just does the same that that Plone currently does, and um, you can internally use Elasticsearch or uh, or Solar already um, if you just want to provide the basic um, search functionality. And luckily, we had a client that um, paid us to create a React-based uh, user interface. Uh, for this endpoint, so this is an example of collective solar to get together with with Plone REST API, um, and I will c quickly demo you um, what you can do. So you you basically do a, do a query, and you see immediately that you, you don't need any autocomplete there, right? Because because the backend solar or Elasticsearch they're so fast in replying, uh, uh, responding to 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 queries um, that autocomplete does not read really makes much uh, sense there, right? So that's really quick, like all the, the default functionality works, so you can sort and uh, also filter um, the results. Um, and um, for an internal project, we, we build a, a search interface that, that is much more sophisticated with facets and all that kind of stuff that you want. But that's that's really fast and that's that's really nice and that, that's what you can do if you have a fast um, um, backend that can, can uh, like Solar or Elasticsearch and um, that's not the only thing. You also need like a fast front-end framework like React or or Angular, right? And for that, we use React because React is like a small library and it's and it's and it's easy to use and it was uh, a good use case for that, right? Even though we are using Angular too in, in other projects, right? Um, so it's really not that like framework war that people talk about. Um, yeah. By the way, like Collective Solas is already released, so we have an alpha release. Um, 
Tom gave a training you know, yesterday, I think, uh, about collective solar, so that's uh, ready to, 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 for use, uh, to, to be used uh, in Plone 5 and Plone 4. Um, uh, so yeah, that, that's a really nice thing. So um, I gave you a first impression about like the, the basic functionality of, of Plone REST API. The, the, the current status is we, we actually have like two packages. I mean, it's like in the Plone community, I think we, we ju we're just not able to, to create one thing in one package, right? So we created two packages, Plone.rest and Plone.rest .rest API. Uh, Plone REST was basically uh, almost uh, created uh, exclusively by, by Ramon. Um, and it allows you to use basically the HTTP verbs uh, on top of Plone, right? And Plone REST API um, gives you all those endpoints. Um, Plone.rest is already in beta phase. We had six releases, uh, and I think it's pretty much stable. Uh, so you can go ahead and, and, and use it right away, right? If you want to, to create your own endpoints, and you, you're also free to create your own like API. But I would recommend to go with Plone REST API because there you already have like the basic building blocks, right, that, that you might want to use. Uh, and you can use your own. Uh, and Plone REST API is still in the alpha phase. We have, we made five releases yet. Um, the API will be subject to, to change most likely because we haven't got the, all the things right. All right, there, there are still many things that we need to discuss and that we need to figure out. API design is really, really hard and like there are not, many people that get that right. Um, so a few things that we need to figure out is, is like framing, like the idea that, that um, if you create a content management system, you might want to, um, want to be able to choose if you want just the core content or everything that, that's currently displayed on, on, the, on the Plone side, right? You don't want, with HTTP 1, uh, you don't want to have like 20 requests, right, to just render one page. You want to have that in like, in like one request, right? So that's, that's framing. Uh, then uh, getting actions right, what you can do that, that's related to, to hypermedia, right? So that, that if you have a JSON uh, response, that it basically tells you what you can do with that content within the API. Um, and also like schemas are, are quite hard uh, to, to get that right with all the functionality that, that we currently have in Plone with like behaviors, with field sets and all that kind of stuff. So the basics are in place, but um, that's, that's complex. So we're still working on that. Um, so, um, yeah, a lot of companies are already using Plone REST API in, in, in production for Teamworks who really considerably uh, contributed to, the, uh, to Plone REST API. They even made Plone REST API work with, uh, with uh, archetypes. <laughs> we never had planned that, but now, now we have it. We have archetypes and dexterity, so you can use Plone REST API with Plone 4 and archetypes, and you can use it with Plone 5 and dexterity and like everything in between, right? Uh, which might be nice if you have a like, legacy application and you want to build something really new and really fancy on top of that. You can do that. Um, as I said, Plone REST, I, I consider that stable. I guess that we could make a final release at some point and also plib it and include it in Plone 5.x, whatever. A Plone REST API will like take a bit more time because we can, be, uh, before we can say that, before we can consider it like to be really stable, right? But I would invite everybody to like, um, to get involved in that, right? We are really open to, to contributions. Um, so please start to use it today. This is on, uh, both packages are on PyP, right? So Plone REST and Plone REST API. We have documentation for, for both packages. I hope the documentation is, is all right. Um, you can always put more effort into, into documentation, but as Ramon said, it's not easy to reuse the like documentation and testing uh, tools that are around because they all don't know about like traversal, right? So we have to build our own stuff. Um, yeah, that's that's about it. Uh, I hope I gave you a, like a first uh, expression uh, impression about what you can do with with Plone REST API. Um, I plan to to sprint on that. So if you want to get into like modern JavaScript development, like Beat React or Angular or whatever, Meteor whatever you like, uh, feel free to like start hacking on, on Plone REST API, tell us what you think, what you think uh, is missing, and uh, that's about it, thank you. <laughs>